Hey guys, what is up? The Hill Twins are here, back at it again with another video. Today, Ian and I will be actually going over a yellow v yellow match, Frieza versus Ginyu. Now this is a very popular match everyone's been asking about. People have been up in arms about what's the best yellow deck. We already explained to you guys that we feel like Frieza is the best deck right. in the game. However, you know, we wanted to show you guys the actual play-by-play -play scenarios on how to approach that matchup. There are times where, depending on how you approach the matchup, you can lose. If you approach it the way that we approach it, I assure you the likelihood of you losing is very, very, very low. So without further ado, Eon, right? Let's jump into this match. This is us versus the GOAT. Um, and yeah, shout out to the GOAT. Right, right. Okay. My mom's upset. He got destroyed. Yeah, um, yeah. Nine rounds, it's crazy. <laughs> so yellow be yellow. First thing you have to understand is the rules of engagement. What lead are you playing against, right? So we have Ginyu. You understand that Ginyu, the strongest thing about Ginyu is that after he awakens, he's able to tap three, restand his battle cards. Unfortunately, that's not enough to deal with Frieza. This hand is actually pretty novel. Um, keep on, I'm just editing this, but yep. go ahead. I'm just... This hand is pretty novel. It has your one drops. You understand that. It's okay to set up stuff on board, especially against Ginyu, because he can't play the same way that Freeze is able to play. So the game plan in this matchup, looking at it, is actually very simple. <clears throat> you want to make Ginyu fight to awaken. I just want to add real quick, guys. I had to pause this on the screen for you guys. Again, and you're going to hear this a lot. This is what I call a Mirage Hand, Ian. You want to yes. explain what a Mirage Hand is? Right. So as if, if you looked at our last... Our last um, <clears throat> excuse me. If you looked at our last video, a Mirage Hand is a hand that looks pretty well but actually there are weaknesses ingrained in it and they can lead you to your own demise, demise now correct. i will say the difference between that this is not a hand that you would likely want to have because it does not have our self-awakeness it does have elements like sorbet but sorbet is vulnerable in the yellow right. matchup it does have crushable which is going to be good it's going to be able to rest one right. of their cards avert an attack but that's as far as it goes our servers right. are kind of vulnerable if they're able to do the same thing and then if they catch awakeness we're not really going to be able to employ right. the strategy that we really exactly. want to employ so to note right so like i said when i saw this hand there's an assortment of cards. They all look beautiful. You got your five drops, you got your crushable, you see a Ginyu there. But when I look at the actual hand and you look deeper, dissect it deeper, the hand isn't really going anywhere. It's right. left up to you to top deck. Right. And now you're playing like a Barris player. You, now you're playing like a leader that doesn't have the mobility that you need. Right. So, for, for example, example, if your sorbet was a uh, Zarbon, maybe perhaps it would be better because not only would your survey pull you a potential one drop freezer that you can continue to use to take st stuff off their board between the crusher ball and the czar bomb but it also can pull you a two drop freezer which is going to help you awaken as well oh, as rest their right. cards and control their resources right so, so when i said this hand is novel that is actually a play on words because of the fact that it is a mirage correct right these things are okay but we don't really know where they're going to take us correct so correct. we are so, going to shuffle this hand back i go ahead and i decide to shuffle this hand back um and now Beautiful. this hand Beautiful. is absolutely amazing we got the energy marker okay we got uh, our one drops in there. We got our Ginyu. We see our two drop Frieza. We have a super combo and a birder. This hand right. is a much better hand. And the two drop Ginyu as well. So we're going to be able to place cards and ball as well. Correct. And we really want Ginyu to take. We want Ginyu to take the pace of this game. We want right. Ginyu to do what he wants to do. All good games start with understanding is the hand that you have going to be able to get you to your destination. You want a vehicle, your vehicle has to be good. If you're going from New York to Florida and you're driving there, you gotta make sure that that vehicle can get you to right, get you right. there completely. This hand is gonna allow us to have mobility so that we can get to our destination, which right. is the victory. So without further ado, let's jump into this match, guys. Okay. So Ginyu's starting and he charges and drops this one drop. This is absolutely, um, ooh, yeah, this is absolutely what Ginyu typically does. They want to they want to do these one drops, and that's okay. Um, we start with the energy. We swing. He takes the damage. We set and up the, we set up the, the, the sorbet. sorbet. And at this point, mm -hmm. if he kills sorbet, it's okay. Right. We just need to see more cards. Right. Because we have a game plan. There we go. Correct. As you guys can see. Beautiful. 
he's going to summon his two drop and he's going to hit me. And this is okay because I definitely want to get hit by this card. But the issue is, is that now I have a card to swing into, which is beautiful. Right. So a little sorbet dies there, and that's okay. He's sitting at six cards in hand. I have eight. So as in the yellow matchup, we're going to charge that freezer. In the yellow matchup, cards in hand, it's king. Right. So this is beautiful now, guys. going to go ahead and take that life, and I'm going to swing it to his freezer. And I'm just going to combo, because I actually just really want super this. combo. Yeah. I want this freezer gone. If he gives me a super, he, that's a card sure. out of his hand. Yeah. But you traded a 10k for a super combo, which is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to attack. Now, are you going to give me a card and let it die? He gave us a card, which is good, because now he's at five cards. He's going to go to six after lead swing next turn. He still has a card on board, which is vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And this is actually pretty big for us. Especially um, because we have the one drop death ball as well, which can come into play. Right, exactly. This is actually pretty big for us because he's actually going very low in hand. He'll be able to tap two energy, but he's going very low in hand. And this is beautiful for us at right. this point. He's at five life. You just can't do it the way we do it. That's no. That's the problem. So he's right. going to attack. We're going to take that because it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he's trying to get value instead of attacking until the, he believes. He's confident he's going to be able to kill the um, mm -hmm, the two drop. And so at this point, you know, he's confident. So right. we're like, hey, go ahead, you know. Correct. And, um, you know, at this point... He's swinging at my car. My goal is to awaken next turn without utilizing energy because right. I did draw the cooler. Right. So I said, you know what? I'm going to allow him to swing into this. I'm going to trade cards because I have more cards in hand than him at this point. Right. And it's an investment. Also, on top of that being an investment, you have to understand that when Frieza untaps two cards from you, that essentially puts two cards back into your hand. Correct. You're it essentially virtually puts two cards back. Drawing two cards, you know, in a different way. So now we get to pressure him. Right. <laughs> kind of could have swung into it. Doesn't really matter. We swing into the. I should have swung into the, the three drop. drop but, but he defends it either way, which is fine. Right. But this is where my freezer should have swung into the three drop. That was an error that I made, which is okay because as, as, as we are going through it, these are things that you need to also understand. understand. So, so swinging into get, um, the three drop is the best because this three drop would have died and now I cleared a board with cooler. Swing into the 15K and, and clear the three drop. So that right. should have been the right the way. Two drop. Now he has a chance to potentially super combo, which yeah, if we take which, a super combo. Which he does. Right, because obviously he needs a, a freeze on board. If he has another Ginyu, he's gonna need to set that up or he's severely behind right so as you guys can see he goes ahead and he super combos and that's okay because that's a card out of his hand but we have this um this this cooler here right. that is pretty much king in this matchup right. and here we go we just untap two cards so we just put two additional cards in our hands right and and, and that is the you know so he does all of this and he's able to awaken right. but if his hand he is can't so rest the cooler out right and his hand is so low mm -hmm. so at this point, he's doing Ginyu things, and he awakens, um, and which is to our advantage because we didn't have to work to awaken him. We said, we're going at your board. You work to awaken. You put yourself in a position where now we can start saying swing lead. Right. Um, and, and, and at this point, who cares? So he attacks, and I go ahead and block, and I take off the 2K. And um, I mean, I take out the uh, two drop that didn't swing. And he's going to go to 50, and my objective is to block this attack, go to 60, because um, this card is just king in this matchup right now. Also, next turn, we will need the two one-drop Ginyus and the two-drop Ginyu in order to really get back our advantage. So at this point, it's absolutely okay to put to combo the 10Ks right now. The 10Ks are of no value. They're inconsequential. And in this case, he attacked, did not combo. That was beautiful on our behalf. Um, he does not untap his cards, so that's just that. There we go. We charge the 10k. Now, at this point, we are going to create immense value. Correct. Okay. So he's dead. Um, 
at this point, and we we swung to see if we saw our, our three drop. Right. Since we didn't see the three drop, it's safe to go ahead and drop the other thing you at this point. But we swing into the three drop. I should, should have, have rested, rested the three drop. drop. Yes, I should have rested the three drop. It's okay. Um. Yes. Exactly. These error. are some errors. Um. I was actually very tired when I was doing this match. Okay. Because I'm um, like, I don't expect right. that from you. No. No. Of course not. But. This is the reason why I'm telling him because now both will be all, all of his cards will be rested. Right. But we don't have the last attackers yet. We do have a Gingy. Right. Nonetheless, it's just value at this point. He has three cards in his hand for life. I'm going on seven. And um I have two one drops. And this is where the disparity really starts to take effect. Um, Beautiful. as you guys can see. Beautiful. And I'm going to pass my turn because I want to keep this one drop, this death ball open because I know that he can get a little greedy with summoning multiple cards. And yeah. At this point, he goes down to three life and then he's actually struggling for cards. We can actually perfect guard this. Yeah, I'm blocking. Um, actually. Yep, perfect block this, rest and kill that. Um, and, and yeah. And at this point, the game yeah. is over. He concedes. He wastes no time. Also, I'm going to let you guys know. Um, Look, there's not a best of three, so you guys don't have to worry about, you know, you can utilize all the time that you have in a match. But in situations like this where we're playing a best of three, it's extremely important to identify when you need to pack it up and go into game two, right? right. Um, so these players are wasting no time. They're looking at that, and these are reasonable, foreseeable um, within events that you can see within the next two turns, this rapid decline and then uh, a, a defeat. So he wastes no time and just goes straight into victory. And again, if we move into a best of three format, guys, that's just one of the qualities of a player that you have to have. You can try to get good, but when you see a, on a play, an opponent playing at the level that he's playing at and the lead that he has based off of his strategy, because all he did was employ a strategy. He knows what to do and how to do it. Once he mollied his hand, he got the cards he needed, he went in and he did exactly what he sought out to do. Right. So at this point, you concede and you move on to games two and three. Obviously, this is the best of one, so you don't have to do that. But yeah. Right, so that's pretty much the concept, guys. There are a few things to take note of. Again, understanding the money process, um, you know, right. um, after that, understanding um, how to approach the matchup. Right. And um, again, largely, guys, it's rules of engagement to approach not only every color, but then the individual leaders in this color. And what's so important for you guys to understand is that when you know how to approach not only the color, but the leader that's in that color, the matches is, is going to be a lot more easier for you to surmount. These obstacles that you're facing are going to be a lot more easier for you to take down. Um, again, just wrapping everything back up. First thing, our leader's yellow. He plays like us, but not exactly like a, us. We know one of his weaknesses is that when he drops his one-drop Gingyu, that card is going to stay rested unless he taps three energy and discards a card from his hand. When he swings with his entire board, that's going to be rested. We don't have to worry about awakening him because we know he's going to do it himself. We can avert all of our resources to taking cards from his hand. How do we take cards from his hand? Well, he placed cards on the board. Those cards turned sideways, and those cards did not restand. By taking cards from his hand, we avert all our attacks into him, make his self-awakening self us a one-for-one, one, meaning he traded one card from his hand, it took one life from his hand, and now that card dies, we essentially crit him a life. Okay, it's all about the numbers. So that's pretty much how you want to approach the matchup. Um, again, there are a few things that Eric I should have done better. Um, but obviously he made this very early in the morning. He was up pretty late and he made this um, very early in the morning One of the things is again, especially in this matchup If you have cooler in play you want to make sure that you kill the three drops so that there's no Question as to whether or not you get value out of your two drop or less kill. Yes, and so yeah, um, that's pretty much the case guys um, Again, if you are enjoying these uh, sessions guys um, We need you guys to go ahead and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Welcome. We're happy to have you guys um, definitely want to grow our channel with you guys. Um, right. so go ahead and subscribe, like this video, guys, so that it can be shared and seen by other Dragon Ballers alike. And yo, welcome to this to this Dragon Ball journey with us, guys. Right. Lastly, I just want to say, guys, this is the Freezer series. We're posting this on YouTube because we want to do a few things. When we want to establish a relationship with you guys, we want you to understand that we not only do we know what we're talking about, what we care about, what we're talking about, we're not here to say, hey, let's hold all this information and be the very best or amongst the very best. But instead, I want to create the overall um, um, 
you know, increase the overall level of players so that your play experience could be good. I'd rather lose a match that was well fought and played very well than to lose a match where I felt like I just didn't know what I was doing and I felt like I did everything wrong. No, those are not the matches. And I know players don't want to experience that. So we're here to help you get better. This is the Freezer series, guys. This is going to be available on YouTube as well as other uh, um, segments from this series on our Patreon. We also have other point of views. We also have other deck profiles, lists, etc. that will be on Patreon. We need your support, guys. It's, it's very simple. We need the subscribers on YouTube. So please, guys, after this, after you watch this, we ask that you go ahead and subscribe to us on YouTube and get notified. Hit that notify bell so that you can know when we post our video because you know it's always going to be good, guys. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. And like always, guys, stay, stay super. super.